Big time November showdowns in Athens, second week in a row. We're doing a preview of what Ole Miss is bringing to Athens as they get ready to play the Georgia Bulldogs. Brent Rollins, Dan Young, Film Don't Lie, presented by Braided Pest Management, ASW Distillery. Brent, the first name, and we're going to say it a lot here in this preview of Ole Miss, Jackson Dart, what he does for Lane Kiffin's team. Throws literal darts. Uh, and it's not like he's just a running QB kind of guy. He is a – he's a little bit of both. Uh, great as a thrower. And, and – you know, we're going to show some of the running game elements too, but on, on, on the whole, they, they're an offense that will attack you consistently, attack you down the field, attack you with misdirection, RPO game, tempo, all of it. And just when you think you know, one thing is going to happen, they hit you with delays and, and all sorts of things that are unique within the play action game. The other part, like play action is 50% of their passing game. It's one of the things like if you can turn them into a straight drop back team, you as a as a defense should like your chances a lot better uh, than not, because I think that's where some of that creativity goes out the window with them just watching uh, the games that I've watched this season uh, and really Lane's offense in, in its history. But undeniable, the ability to design things uh, in the play action in the run game. But, you know, we'll we'll see some of the drop back stuff later. One thing looking like another in this case, this is likely a Tyke Smith for Georgia having to defend this. Yep. Um, could be other guys. I mean, we saw a lot of different corners come in against uh, Missouri last week. So I, I, I do think that if you're Lane Kiffin, you're trying to find ways to put Tyke Smith in conflict. Yep. And especially with how aggressive Georgia typically is on the screen type game. They're, and they're the number one explosive in terms of explosive pass percentage, at least on a percentage basis. They're the uh, tops in the SEC. You talked about running backs. I'll let you have a, a shot at this one here. They are a counter, you know, so that's a guard guard tackle counter with this one, but they are a counter heavy, power heavy, people pulling consistently team. Well, this is actually a guard H back, sorry. Um, and the big thing about them, and this is where I, you know, I had said on another video where I think Georgia's a little bit better set up to defend their running game as long as their eye discipline and, and they're still physical but more so than Missouri because Ole Miss right now is at the tier, near the bottom in the power five in terms of yards before contact per attempt, i.e. an offensive line stat. They are in the top five in the power five at yards after contact per attempt, i.e. running back stat. These guys, 24 and, and four Judkins, Bentley and Judkins, insanely hard to bring down and run with power and speed and burst. Like you better tackle well, or they will house call you like this one here. Now, granted they are playing LSU's defense, which as we've seen is basically yeah. like the Eastern or mid middle of the country version of USC's defense. So, you know, yeah, take that with a grain of salt, but still these, the backs are good independent of that. Georgia will not have Jamon Dumas Johnson with the arm fracture. So that's one of the more experienced inside linebackers who's really great in the box that he would probably do better on a play like this. It's going to put some pressure on the guys coming in behind that with the yep. Raylan Wilsons. If that's Jalen Walker getting pushed back there, you've seen CJ Allen get a lot of reps there. How yep. do they handle these inside runs? Because I got to think Lane Kiffin's going to be testing that too. Yep. And he's definitely going to test like the next play. I think that we show he's definitely going to test their uh, I discipline. Well, actually, this this is uh this is the third down. This is the much like we saw with Brady Cook from Missouri. Uh, Mr. Dart uh, can run. He's very much involved in terms of the design running game, but also third third down situations. If you give him lanes, he will take first downs all day every day. If you're an Ole Miss fan that's found yourself watching this, I will tell you as someone that has watched Georgia, I think this is something that needs to happen a lot for Ole Miss if you're trying to pull off the upset. Georgia has been susceptible to running quarterbacks this season, and even ones that are much less mobile than a Jackson Dart. Peyton Thorne was, was hard for Georgia to defend when Georgia played Auburn. Can Georgia get better at that? Yeah, it has to some extent. But Brady Cook did a good job last week for Missouri. I think that this is one of the keys to the game for Ole Miss to keep this close. Yeah, and you, and for Ole Miss, it's one, keep your offense on the field, keep the football, and then get your tempo rolling. Because as we're going to see later, there's when, when they get rolling in certain instances, they'll go at breakneck pace. Would you spy? If you're Georgia, would you put a spy on him for the whole game? I mean, or? Just, it just depends. Like, they, they do it so differently, depending upon how many people they bring. But for the most part, yes. Yeah. In a general sense. 
He's a thrower too. I'm not saying he's only a runner. Dart's good, good QB. And play action, and the play action brings people brings linebackers up. Oftentimes, uh, not even here, but still, like he's fourth in the SEC in terms of Pat PFF passing grade. Uh, 80, just behind Carson Beck, he's third in overall grade. He's playing really well. Like he obviously, you know, there was talk you know, in the off season, hey, who's going to be the QB uh, at Ole Miss, especially with Sanders transferring in and. He definitively said, hey, this is my job, and I'm playing basically the entirety of the season. I want to shout out the protection here from from Judkins because he has to get in this hole to allow this to develop. Just good players at the really both their backs. And that's for, uh, Mr. Perkins that he's actually uh, taking care of right there. Yeah, you take care of Harold Perkins. You're doing your job. Four on four there. Well, this Paul's is where, here. Yeah, the misdirection. You got like, – you got counter bash, so like just back going one way. Everybody else is, you know, counter going left, back goes right. QB's reading a lot of this stuff. Like if you aren't ready and your eye, and by the way, you know who did this? This was Ohio State did this and had three or four successful runs uh, against Georgia where you, you know, you're getting them to read their keys and then boom. And the other part, look at the yards after contact. Like just, he, we just saw Cody Schrader rarely come down on first contact against Georgia. Judkins is up there too in terms of, uh, and even more so over, over the whole entirety of the season in terms of missed tackles forced. I thought this was a really good job by Ole Miss in terms of personnel out here because these are some big dudes that you're going to be having on corners for your downfield blocking on this. And I just think that's really smart. You know, you have some of your smaller receivers down here and you get size out there, good effort. That's one way to get your yak. Yep. Well, not after catch, but as yards after toss. Can I go with yard, that? Yards yeah. after contact. But yeah, yes. yards after contact. We'll go yeah. with that. But no, yards, uh, your, just yards in general, because downfield blocking, perimeter blocking is is how you get explosive plays. <laughs> and Ole Miss can do explosive plays. Uh, yes. I should – we didn't even mention, we're doing only Ole Miss offense here. I think that's what yes. Georgia is most worried about. Uh, Ole Miss defense is not as stunning as a whole. I think all the numbers dictate that. You can see the scores they've put up. If Ole Miss wins its game, it's because the offense had a great day. Yeah, and I think that's in terms of exactly. I think I don't think you can say it any better. If they if they win, it's because of the offense and it potentially creating turnovers on defense and pressuring because I think they're going to bring a lot of pressure. They have you know with some transfers in, they actually have defensively now some uh, some pieces along the defensive line. Ivy fifteen, I think it is. Uh, it's a player, uh, but for the most part, yeah, this is we're looking entirely at their offense. I'm already, and this is one where Georgia fans, for those that mostly watch this, uh, they care a lot about the offense. I'm already feeling Ole Miss fans be like, you don't respect the defense that we got. It ain't about respect at all. It's just that, look, I, I know that the, the offense is what Georgia and Georgia fans are most worried about, just like you said, Brent. Yep. Here you go. This is late in the game against LSU. You need some plays. And this when in doubt, they're letting they're throwing it up and they're letting number nine go get it. Trey Harris, I mean, just I think he's in terms of receiving grade, he's up there in the country, let alone the SEC. Ninety one point six overall grade, just big time contested catch after contested catch, uh, explosive after after getting catch right at twenty yards of reception. They're just going to throw it up to him and let him go get it. And by the way, great great throw, great. Opportunity here, and we're going to see one later. It happened this, this past weekend against AM. Back shoulders, hard to defend. Georgia struggled a little bit against, uh, against Missouri with that. Lane Kiffin's going to see that there. All right, this happens. Still needing to score against LSU. Yep, and then they go tempo. They go really fast and get the, get the ball out quick, and then they go get yards. <laughs> I mean, 24 is so tough to bring down. Quick, thick. Or low to the ground. Both him and Judkins, very, very similar kind of body types, but just explosive, shifty, like very tough to bring down. I think if you look at in terms of missed tackles forced, Judkins is number one in the SEC. I think Bentley's in the top like six, six or seven in terms of running backs with missed tackles forced. If you're trying to make a tackle, you never want your legs to end up like old Tims yeah. did here. Yeah. And granted, for those of the Georgia fans that are probably going to be in the comments saying that they're, you're showing stuff against LSU and we saw what LSU's defense does. Yes, we get that, but that doesn't mean that these guys aren't players uh, on the offensive side for, for Ole Miss. 
I mean, would you rather see the two lane highlights? I, two, two lanes, really good team. I, I would rather watch this game. Yeah, that's so that's I'm I, saying in terms of games that I know I watched Bama, Ole Miss, or Bama, LSU, Auburn, and then AM this past weekend, watched as much as I could before the Georgia game. Bama, here we go. This is where they get you like play action, intermediate stuff, crossing. Scheming guys wide open, 19 – in terms of targets, 19, 11, and 9 pre-split evenly in terms of the upper 50s and the targets. So, all, they're all consistently on the field, and they're all going to be throwing the ball. But this is an area where Georgia has been hurt this season. And if you're concerned about the running game big time, especially on first down, I, I will say I was flabbergasted watching the Alabama game. Like I thought they could have scored at will against Alabama, but obviously protection w- failed them over time. But also, not I feel early. Like, I feel like they got away from who they were uh, in this in the game against Alabama. Now it was all, it was a very just the effort. Uh, it, it, it was shot. I thought they should have been you know one score game, fourth quarter type game, and they almost uh, just laid down. I hate to say that, but you know. It, it just it was it was very much I'm like okay where's this that you running in this game where's this that you do in this game and just you just didn't see it against Bama and to that point this becomes a statement game for Ole Miss because if you're turning over a new leaf and being an SEC contender you got to hang well, with the Alabamas and the Georgias it's as big as it gets big now, as it gets they still need help to be able to get to SEC championship but you went out you're in college football playoff talk at that point yes of one loss, just saying. Uh, it gets get, gets dicey. I, I don't know that Alabama has a loss on the schedule, though I will say, you beat Georgia, and then you, you win your final two games, including the Egg Bowl. Bama still has to go to Auburn for the Iron Bowl, and I've seen worse Auburn teams compete with better Bama teams. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. I think the spread, by the way, for this week is only like 10 against Kentucky, at Kentucky. Like, weird thing happens in, in yeah. the Iron Bowl when Auburn can – can kind of poop in the bed of Alabama. Yes. Another explosive, though, by the way. And this is something that, you know, we showed a little earlier. Brady Cook just had 50-plus yards in the first half against Georgia, literally on the exact same play. Spread them out. And, and obviously, Georgia's defense is very similar stylistically and, and schematically to Alabama's. So, yeah, QB runs a threat, always. This was, I remember watching this live and be like, man, that's just, it's beautiful. The recognition and commitment to go never gets touched. Very quick runner. I, I wouldn't say top end speed's anything to be worried about, but just very quick and, and physical. And makes cuts. Like he's yeah. not afraid to run through people, which I'm always like, dude, why are you doing that? But stay healthy, try to stay healthy. But no, he's a big, thick dude. Yeah. So early on, we thought in this game that Ole Miss would hang with Alabama. By this point, you're already down by 10 points and you need something to happen. And and this is where like this is where it leaves a lot to be desired to me is the straight drop back game. Like look at the I know the guys trying to create uh you know just sort of windows but do you think 86 is getting the ball right there? The guy the middle receiver in the bunch. Watch what's the middle receiver in the bunch. Do you think he thinks he's getting the ball thrown to him? That nope. guy. Like that's the like, he's just all right. I'm just going to get in the way. Watch it at full speed. Like he has, there's no shot that he the ball is going to him. He's just creating for other guys, and that's where I, some of the concepts that they run within the play action game. I would love to see them duplicated in the, in the drop back game. Obviously, as the game went on, Bama just consistently pressured them more and more. Uh, and, and pressure is something that George is starting to get a little bit more of as the season goes along and as some younger guys get more playing time. That will be obviously key uh, because if you pressure any QB, it, it does it does not good things to them. Also, Ole Miss not being as great with drop back passing. Where did Georgia start to force Missouri into mistakes last week? It's when you had a lead in the fourth quarter and Missouri had to play a game that it's not comfortable playing, which is we're about to have to throw this for the rest of the game and not do some of the things that we want to do with our running backs. You get ahead on Ole Miss, you're probably going to have some similar results. Yeah, Dart's been okay, at least in terms of passing grade. He has a 63.8 passing grade, which actually is not terrible against – against pressure, but less than 50% completion, just like anybody else. It, 
it hurts. It hurts your QB. Passer rating drops by 30 points on average. But you throw ones like this, that passing grade's come out right back up. And nine can win and win consistently and win easily. Like, all right, Georgia, like in terms of the cornerback play, th- this guy's going to big play after big play after big play. And they're going to get, and they're going to give him opportunities. Kamari Lasseter, yeah. you don't get a break. Nope. Luther Burden, you're off of him. Now you're down here on a bigger guy. Yep. Jalen Humphrey or, or Julian Humphrey, not Jalen, Julian Humphrey, like get some more. Dalen Everett, like they're going to find ways to, to target you guys and put nine on you. Like, because he wins. He wins consistently. Like I said, about 20 yards a catch. That's just gorgeous. That's... And then they go tempo. And then Texas A&M literally fumbles all over himself, <laughs> hits all each other, like five guys in the middle, like because of the tempo. And the 20... This is as close as you get to the two Florida players blocking each other against <laughs> uh, Georgia Southern in that famous clip. Like, th- this is as close as you get to that from a defensive version. I want to say they blocked two guys, and the rest of them just tackled each other, like, or hit, hit each other. And then the, the safeties, who knows what he's looking at. But this is the thing. Much like, you know, Georgia preparing for Tennessee, when they hit big plays, it's instant tempo. And oftentimes, what's interesting watching Ole Miss is oftentimes they, they sacrifice any sort of execution almost to go so fast where it's, you know, quick snap and the offensive linemen are even looking around like, what are we doing? Because the ball's out instantaneously with the tempo. So, you know, what do you got to prepare for? Misdirection, eye discipline, QB run game. QB is always a threat with the legs. Nine is a big play receiver. Got to know where he is at all times. Outside of that, try to get him into a straight drop back games, keep him, keep him behind the chains. And I think you can – sort of consistently slow because what's interesting about their offense is if you look at success success rate metrics, their success rate metrics are lower, almost like 10% lower than than Georgia, but they're still explosive play rate much higher. So it's not as the consistency might not necessarily be there, but obviously they're still scoring a lot of scoring drives because of the explosive ability. One thing I didn't see as much this season from Ole Miss and especially in that Alabama game that I'm just used to seeing from Lane Kiffin is more of the hokey, we're going to try some stuff. Like, we got some stuff up the sleeve that's been in the playbook for a while. I think you might see some of that against Georgia. Of Let's try to catch Georgia off guard here. Yeah. I went to the Egg Bowl last season and definitely happened multiple times in that really crazy game that Mississippi State ended up winning, uh, winning there. But uh, I, I think that Ole Miss is going to be trying some stuff here. You're going to see some funky things, and Georgia needs to really – I don't know if you can prepare for that other than have your eyes where they need to be. And the tempo is the, the biggest thing. You don't want it to overwhelm you. And now typically it doesn't for Georgia, like in terms of Tennessee, how well they've played Tennessee the past few years. But I think I and I haven't I didn't look this up and I should have looked it up before the video. I'm almost certain Ole Miss is the only SEC team that Kirby Smart has not beaten. So, coach. yeah, they haven't played since the first season, right? Right, since 20, 2016. And that now, was when like, Hugh Freeze was there and that was a correct. Chad Kelly – destruction i was over by the second quarter i believe so you know for all the talk of lane kiffin versus alabama every year you haven't had lane kiffin versus kirby smart and they were on the same coaching staff too and lane kiffin has fun on twitter with him too lane kiffin, man <laughs> their twitter right now like the old miss twitter the football twitter oh it's just chef's kiss excellent like if you're an old miss person sneaking your way in here I, I want all of that to be on Georgia. I mean, it is it is like middle school grade trolling of we're pulling the Jimbo clips of him throwing shade at Ole Miss and being like, look what just happened in that game. Like, I, I love every bit of that. It reminds me of Auburn basketball Twitter, which is a whole different world of we're editing all these things. And, like, man, it's, uh, it's fantastic. I love what Ole Miss is doing. I think Ole Miss is a lot of fun. I think the sport is more fun when Ole Miss is good. <laughs> Yeah, And Ole Miss is good. This is a good team. College game day is going to be there. Atmosphere is going to be great. People might be drunk starting at noon and trying to find their way to the game. Uh, I'm excited for this one. I do think Georgia has an upper hand on on the Rebels, and we'll talk about that on Around the League and our UGA Sports stuff later in the week. But when you have a good quarterback, good skill guys, it mitigates so many things that you could be deficient in otherwise. Yep, and and that's – the, the whole key to the game for Georgia is keeping them in third and seven plus. I think if you do that, if you're Georgia, you're going to you're going to get off the field and you're going to limit some of their scoring abilities. They're going to get some points, yeah, much like Missouri. Uh, but 
I, I think over four quarters, that's where we've said consistently, can someone handle Georgia for four quarters? Can Dart have an out of body, you know, just just have a phenomenal game and just and own the game potentially? That's there. When these upsets happen, it's because you have a really good creative head coach and a quarterback that does a lot of amazing things that is possible with this team. Yep. That is definitely possible. Likely? I don't know. I don't know that we've <laughs> seen that consistently and consistently for four quarters against a team like Georgia. We'll find yeah. out all together. Uh, but this has been a fun scouting report of the Ole Miss Rebels. This is brought to you by Brady Pest Management, the official pest control of the Georgia Bulldogs. They protect Sanford Stadium. They can protect your home too, BradaPest.com. Also brought to you by ASW Distillery. They are distilled by dogs. Five of the six founders are UGA grads, and they have created the Hunker Vodka that you need to have at your tailgate. Every time that that gets sold, portions of the proceeds go to Classic City Collective, which is George's NIL arm. And so that means if you have Tito's at your tailgate, they gave $20 million to Texas last year. So let's think about if you're a Georgia fan, you have Tito's, you're kind of a Texas fan. Just telling you a little bit, or at least you're supporting them in that way when Hunker Vodka is now available to you. All right, Brent, I always enjoy doing these scouting reports. Everyone check out Film Don't Live from our recaps of the Missouri game that's on our YouTube channel. If you will subscribe while you're there, most popular Georgia YouTube channel out here on the interwebs, and we're really proud of that. We'll be back next week for more Film Don't Live.